Hello everyone, my name is Brant Kudrowski and this Organic Chemistry Lab video covers an Organic Structure Drawing and Modeling Experiment, Part 1. The learning objectives for this experiment focus on developing some fundamental skills in organic chemistry. These will serve you well both in lab and in lecture portions of organic chemistry. First, we'll be building plastic models of organic molecules to help you visualize their three-dimensional shapes. We'll determine if two molecules are the same by testing if they are superimposable. In other words, they can be laid on top of each other where all the atoms and bonds match perfectly. We'll draw organic structures in Lewis structure form, condensed structural formula format, skeletal structure form, and 3D perspective forms. We'll translate between drawings of different types. We'll draw the isomers of molecules that can be built from a given molecular formula. And we'll learn to distinguish between constitutional isomers, these are also called structural isomers, and stereoisomers. So at the end of this experiment, you should be able to do all of these things. This will go a long way to helping you get started in organic chemistry, understanding structure. To understand what's going on in this experiment, you'll need a basic knowledge of Lewis structure drawings. You don't have to be a pro at this, but it is important to know about the octet rule and the number of bonds that each atom typically makes. For example, carbon is a group 4 element, it makes 4 bonds. Nitrogen is a group 5 element, it makes 3 bonds and has 1 lone pair. If you're unsure of how that works, you should go back and review Lewis structures first. The other thing you should do is watch my videos on condensed structural formulas, skeletal structures, and model kit use first. Finally, the way the experiment's going to work is it's essentially a worksheet that will work through and answer the questions as we go along. This experiment starts out with propane. Propane is a commonly used fuel. Build a model of propane, which has formula C3H8. Use three sp3 hybridized carbons. These are the carbons, the black spheres that have four holes each, and eight hydrogen atoms. These are small white spheres. Connect the carbon atoms together with the white bonds and connect the hydrogen atoms with the short pink bonds in your model kit. I am not going to go through and do propane for you, but I will do the molecule ethanol, which is similar enough that you'll get the idea and be able to do propane yourself. Ethanol has the formula C3H2OH. I'm giving you the condensed structural formula here. To translate that into a Lewis structure, we just have to understand what the condensed structural formula means. The C, H3, means that there are three H's attached to the carbon. That carbon is in turn attached to a carbon that has two H's, and then that carbon is attached to the OH group. That's the Lewis structure. So let's make a model of this. I'm gonna grab two carbon atoms and an oxygen atom and hook them up to make the skeleton of the molecule. Then I'll put hydrogens in. And now we have our model of ethanol. To translate that into a skeletal structure, you just have to remember that carbon is assumed to exist at the ends of unlabeled lines and at kinks in the structure. Hydrogen atoms aren't drawn in on any of the unlabeled carbons, but you do need to draw the hydrogen in on the oxygen and any atoms that are labeled. Next, we'll work on generating a three-dimensional perspective drawing of our ethanol molecule. Ethanol is not a flat molecule. Some of the atoms and bonds lie in the same plane, and those are highlighted here. But there are others that are closer in space to your eye, and some that are further away. We need to have a way of representing that with a drawing, and that's where the 3D perspective drawing comes in. All of the bonds that are parallel to the plane of the paper get represented with lines. I'll draw those in first. Now we need to identify which hydrogen atoms are pointing out of the plane and are closer to your eye, and which are further away from your eye and pointing into the plane. I'm going to jiggle the structure gently, which will make it easier to see these. I'm highlighting the hydrogen atoms that are closer to your eye in purple. These will get represented with a wedged bond. The wedge needs to start small at the carbon atom and get larger as it approaches the hydrogen. This is to give a sense of perspective. The bond almost seems to get bigger as it gets closer to your eye. From our perspective looking at this molecule, the up-pointing hydrogens and their bonds seem to lean to the left side of the molecule. That's why I've drawn the wedges leaning slightly to the left. Now I'll highlight the hydrogens that are further away from your eye. These are represented with dashed lines to give the perspective that they're further away. The dash bonds start off narrow and then get fatter as we get further away from the carbon, just like we did with the wedge bonds. From our perspective looking at this molecule, the down-pointing hydrogens and their bonds seem to lean to the right. Therefore, I've drawn the dash bonds leaning slightly to the right. Now I'll rotate the molecule slightly to change the perspective. Notice how the positions of the up and down pointing hydrogens change slightly. 
Now the up hydrogens lean to the right and the down pointing hydrogens lean to the left. I've drawn in this alternative perspective where the dashes and the wedges are just flipped. This representation is equivalent to the one below. Both structures represent the same molecule, just viewed from different perspectives. Now you can go through and draw the Lewis structure, condensed structural formula, skeletal structure, and 3D perspective drawing for propane. The next question deals with isomers, which are molecules that have the same molecular formula, but different structures. Butane is a commonly used fuel, which has formula C4H10, and that's used to illustrate this concept. There are two different ways to connect atoms C4H10 that give two different Lewis structures. These are called constitutional isomers. They have the same formula, but their atoms are connected differently. Sometimes these are also called structural isomers. Use your model kit to build two different models of C4H10 that have different connectivities. Then you'll want to test your two structures to make sure that they're actually different. We're going to test to see if they're superimposable. I have a demonstration here to explain how that works. Here are two molecules that have the formula C4H10. We'll test to see if they're the same by checking their superimposability. If they're superimposable, they're the same molecule. Being superimposable means that you can rotate one to make it look exactly like the other, and all of the atoms and all of the bonds will superimpose on each other perfectly. I'm rotating the structure on the right to make it look like the structure on the left. Then I can see that the two structures line up perfectly, therefore they are superimposable. These are the same molecule. When you rotate about single bonds in a molecule, you don't change its identity. A given molecule may have many different rotational forms. These are called conformations. But conformations aren't different molecules. They're rotational forms of the same molecule. Now you can answer question number two and find the other isomer of butane, C4H10, and draw the Lewis structures, condensed structural formulas, and skeletal structures of both isomers. The next question deals with converting condensed structural formulas into Lewis structures and skeletal structures. This was discussed extensively in two prior videos, so if you haven't had a chance to check those out, you really should before you attempt this problem. We'll go through the first example together, and then you can do the rest on your own. Reading the structure from left to right, it starts with a carbon that's bonded to three hydrogens. Next, there are a series of three CH2 groups. This is followed by a CH. And then two CH3 groups are bound to that. Now we'll work on drawing a skeletal structure for the molecule. The longest carbon chain in this molecule is six carbons long. I'm going to start by drawing that. Remember, carbons are assumed present at the ends of unlabeled lines and it kinks in the structure. So this is a six carbon chain. Now we just have to add the pen and CH3 group to complete the molecule. And that finishes this example. Now you can go back and answer the other questions on this page, and then move on to the next video which covers the next part of the experiment. If you found this video useful, check out the next one in the series or watch the prior video. And consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. My name is Brant Kudrowski. Thanks for watching.